On screen today, I'm gonna to show you how you plan, set up and run Facebook ads campaigns for e-commerce. But why should you listen to me specifically? Well, over the last couple of years, I've spent millions of dollars running Facebook ads for different clients in different niches, advertising different products. And unlike many of the big channels here on YouTube teaching you how to run Facebook ads, I don't head up an agency and pay other people to actually do this process. No, I run the Facebook ads myself. I'm in the accounts every single day working with these clients very closely, looking at their business and the ads so I know exactly what works in the platform, both in terms of the things advertisers care about, but also the businesses themselves they care about. Plus, this is specifically an e-commerce Facebook ads tutorial. Running Facebook ads for local businesses to generate leads or for high ticket info products where you have a longer funnel isn't the same as straight up DTC e-commerce Facebook ads for things like Shopify. So if you've watched other videos that haven't specified exactly what they're teaching you, ignore them because it's probably gonna be mixed advice and not gonna be fully applicable to e-commerce. Now in today's tutorial video, I'm gonna cover the essential activities you have to undertake in order to set up successful Facebook ads for e-commerce. And I wanna stress that these are the essential activities. Don't just jump to the end section where I'm actually building the campaign, because if you do that without doing these things prior to that, you will create ads that aren't very good and you won't have success when you go to run your actual ads, which means you'll just waste your money. So I'm gonna read off the sections now for ease. So first of all, we'll start by quickly setting up customer avatars with AI, and that's gonna help us target the ads and make our creative generation process also easier. Section two, we'll look at a competitor analysis to find ad designs that are currently working in the platform and we'll be able to make copy and creative that is gonna increase our chances of success from doing that. Section three will be how to write ad copy. So that's the text section of your ad that will accompany the creative and also be implemented into the creative. Section four is gonna be a brief overview of the strategy we'll be following for e-commerce specifically in the, the account. And then section five, we're gonna look at a step-by-step -step demonstration in Ads Manager of me actually building the campaigns from that strategy. And then finally, section six, where what no one seems to show you on YouTube, I'm gonna show you how you actually optimize your campaigns you know, increasing the spend, decreasing the spend, turning off things that aren't working, doing more of things that are working, okay? So whether you're someone who is doing drop shipping, you uh, have an established brand that you're looking to run into Facebook ads with, or you want to run Facebook ads for e-commerce clients as an agency, you need to watch this video. Right, the first thing we're gonna do is to create our customer avatars or buyer personas as they're also known. Now this, process is essential because we're only doing broad targeting. So we have to create creatives and copy messaging that speak and resonate with our ideal sort of customer. So you're not going super niche with these, you know, getting super like um, micro into what they are. It's very high level. It's like, what what are the, the, the macro? What are the, the avatars here that we have? so that we can at least have a, gro a broad category of how we're speaking to people because each group's gonna have a different um, problem that you're targeting. It's gonna have different USPs that your product is solving, even though it's the same product. So we wanna make sure that we, are, we have that in a place where we can go and refer to it and we can always reference it when we're creating our, our copy or our uh, creatives. So what you'll end up having is something like this, where you'll have all the demographics, you'll have the frustrations and fears, wants and aspirations, key purchase drivers, you'll have some before and after states, and then you'll have the hooks. And we're gonna use ChatGPT to do this process because it'll save you absolute hours of work. And it is very, very accurate. Uh, for most, most products are gonna be, you know, available to do this on as well, they're, they're gonna be common. If you've got something super niche, maybe you won't get enough info and you'll have to do this manually. But I'll show you the chat GPT thing um, anyway. But make sure you go through this process of taking the prompts from chat GPT, taking the information and putting it into this 
document because this is going to stand as a reference guide that you can always come and refer to, have open whenever you're doing creative research, whenever you're uh, not research, sorry, design, whenever you're designing creatives for briefs, whenever you are writing copy, you can make sure you're ticking off these exact points uh, and you have everything in the same place. Really, really saves you time and makes things much easier. So I'm going to give you all the prompts that you can use for chat GPT to make this exact process. So you don't have to worry about that. You just have to know how to use chat GPT. So open chat GPT, copy the first prompt from here. And yeah, we're not going to go through chat GPT and show you this. This will be quick. I just want to show you roughly what you'll be doing. Uh, so yeah, like enter the first prompt, of course, once you're in chat GPT. So create the three main avatars for a premium natural sleep supplement. So you're going to specify your product here. So create the three main avatars for X product and get specific. You know, if, if my product was clothing, don't just say clothing. If it's like male, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to describe like clothing, but it was like male formal wear clothing. Make sure you give it ChatGPT that specific so that it can give you accurate avatars for that product. Because someone that's like in streetwear is not going to be the same person looking for formal wear. So don't just have clothing as a category. Make sure you specify what really is your product. And again, don't get too micro on it because then it's not going to be able to give you uh, enough information. So we've done that first one and you can see it's given me three. I like to do three because then I can do my human process of going, well, are these actually relevant to my brand? So ChatGPT can give you ideas, but it doesn't know exactly. You might have done your own research, you might know your own customers, and you know what the avatar is. So if it isn't correct, you might want to just run it again, because sometimes you'll get different, different answers. Or you might want to tell it, here's the avatar, and then you can proceed with the next prompt. So I, I'm going to do this process for all three, because why not? But... In the end, you're gonna pick one that is the main one. So for me, the main one is this busy professional. That's the main avatar I wanna target for my particular brand. So even though people from these two will buy, when I'm starting out, I don't wanna target them yet. But if I have the, once I've got this one working and I've, I've found insights, I've got things working, then I'll branch out, take the learnings from that and edit the messaging to be reflective for these people and run it as a separate campaign, okay? So we're gonna focus on this one first. Let's come and just do one prompt for you. So then I'd come in, I'd do this, take this, come back into here and drop it in. So it's gonna give me all these demographic details. I'd obviously come copy that information, come into this form. I'm gonna give you an empty version of this, of course put the age in, put the gender, family status, the financial situation, the education level. These are all gonna pop out because I've given you the exact prompts that provide these and just go through this process. The only thing I would say is ChatGPT might not give you your key purchase drivers because it doesn't know exactly what your product is. So you have to come in and add to these. So add to the section, you know, if you have more USPs, add them. If it's given you USPs that aren't relevant, remove them. Have that human input. This just gives you a quick quick um, foundation and then you can build up, up on it. You won't need to spend more than an hour on this process, but definitely do it and really have a think about it. And of course, you can add to it in time as, you're, as you get comments on your ads, as uh, you get feedback from customers, from reviews, and you start to learn, oh, I didn't realize people had that desire for my product. I didn't realize that was a USP. I didn't realize that was a pain point people had. Add to this document over time and it's gonna be your hub for really making great resonating ads for your audience. And ultimately that's gonna get you success on the platform. So that really is everything we have to say about ChatGPT. Let's jump on to actually looking at the creative. Right, so now we're ready for the competitor research and don't skip this process. Do this often because competitor research is extremely valuable in being able to get ads or design ads that actually work 
straight off the bat on the platform. Because if you think about it, if we look at what our competitors are doing and we look at specific metrics that give us an idea of, okay, these these creatives have maybe been running for a long time. They've been maybe having a lot of spend behind them. They may be generating a lot of engagement. Well, these creatives are probably performing for that brand because otherwise they'd turn them off. So we can say, well, if these creatives are performing for that brand, if we take the type of creative, if we take the structure of the, the creative and the copy, some of the messaging they're using, we increase our chances of actually finding successful creatives right off the bat by taking inspiration from the competitors rather than just trying to create our own new from scratch ideas that are completely untested and unproven as a concept. So I've actually had in my old brand amazing success from taking a competitor's creative as inspiration, replicating the exact structure of their copy, but obviously fitting it to my own brand. And I cut the CPA in half with that ad just by doing that. So this process really does work. A lot of people will only do this when they start running an account and they won't do it again, which is crazy. You always want to be looking at the market as like a cyclical thing. So maybe once a month, once every two months, you go through this process for any account. But of course, if you're running multiple accounts, you have big spend. Maybe you're doing this more often as you're just entering new creatives or generating new creative ideas. Okay, so I am going to use a tool today called Big Spy because I do this often. So this just makes my life easier. You can, of course, do this same process on Meta's ads library uh, completely for free, no limits. I think Big Spy, you can still use it for free, but you'll just have a limit on the amount of times you can search for things. Um, but yeah, if you have the money or you're doing this a lot, if you're working for clients or you have like a big spending brand, just get the tool, it'll make your life easier. And the one I recommend is Big Spy. And I do actually have a promotional code for it. So you can use Cameron 10. There's a link in the description. And yeah, you'll get 10% off when you use that code, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enter the the search term we're looking for. So maybe do a bit of analysis on um, Google Keyword Planner and try and find out what is the main search term people are using for your product. Of course, if it's something obvious, then you can just use the obvious one. So mine is a sleep supplement. It's quite an obvious one. I don't need to do keyword research. Some people call it sleep aid though. So that might be a different thing, but yeah, sleep supplement is pretty, pretty common. So we can just use that. But if you have something a bit more niche, maybe you want to go and find the actual keywords that are the most popular for your product using uh, Google. So anyway, we've, um, we've typed in sleep supplement. Uh, the other thing I've already selected it, but I recommend you select exact search because otherwise you get whole stuff that is related to sleep, but it's not an actual supplement. It might be, you know, just things that help you sleep. So yeah, I've done exact search. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to select the market that you're advertising in, because obviously we can take inspiration from any market, but what happens is often you'll be in a market where things that resonate in one country don't resonate in another country. So as an example, I had a brand where we did very well in the UK. We had all these different ads that worked in the UK. When we tried to advertise in the US though, it didn't work so well with those specific ads. So it's not always cross country. It doesn't always transfer over. Sometimes it does. Certainly the US is one that you can use for inspiration because they have a lot of spend, a lot of innovation going on there. They're really the market leader. So we can get a lot of ideas from them and try them out in our own market down the line. But yeah, to start off, just go with the market that you're actually in. Of course, if you can't find enough um, competitors, if there are not enough people running ads, maybe you need to go to another market like the US or, or one of the big um, Western ones, Canada, Australia, the UK, if it's English speaking, and get the learnings from them. Okay, so we're gonna do US for now and we're gonna come down and see all these different ads. So what you wanna do the first time you're doing this is probably just find out the ones that are, um, actually let's let's sort this by impressions first. Okay, so you got the impressions. You wanna come in and find the ones that are running with the most impressions, maybe on a more recent basis to see who's currently 
running in the market. Note down the advertisers, so you can click on them, search by advertiser if you want. But note down these advertisers, so you can just come back to this process and just use the advertisers rather than looking at the whole market. So you could even come in and search the advertisers. Let me show you the example of Night Shred by InnoSups, who are very big. I can copy their product page, put it in here, and just look at their ads specifically because I know they're already a competitor and they have good stuff, right? So you can come in and do that, but I'm gonna show you this same process on the whole market just so we can get an idea of how you do it. So are we back? Ah, come on. Uh, sleep supplement. Uh, is that search? USA, actually that's, this one okay so we've started by impressions and you can see these first couple maybe don't look that great and I've never heard of them so you know you've got to do a bit your own research into the brand see if it's someone you actually want to copy new traditions to me seems like some sort of or maybe it is like a decent brand it seems like maybe some more traditional brand that's not DTC as such and maybe they've just got money to spend behind the one ad and that's why they've done it. We really want to be looking at the DTC brands because that's what we are. So we can see these other ones. I know Neural Hacker Collective. Okay, so let's say, for example, this is an ad that I want to take as inspiration. Even though it looks very underproduced, this is the, the amazing insights you get from this process because I've filtered by impressions. So I know that this is something that's got money behind it. If it's got money behind it, it's getting lots of impressions. I can say with enough confidence that well, if it's a smart advertiser, they're probably running that because it's getting them results, it's getting them good performance, or they would turn it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the copy first of all. I'm gonna take that, put it into this document. And you can see here they've got coding. Um, what do you say? They've added like, yeah, they've added code into UTML, UTML, sorry, into their actual copy to give it these spaces. I've checked this with my own copy. You, you don't need to obviously add this. They've probably used like a third party app or something to do formatting on their copy. You can just do a space and it will show in the platform with a space. No problem. It's not like organic stuff. So that's that. We've copied that. Um, let's then click on it and download the actual image. Okay, so come and copy that. Let's come up twice. And paste it in there. And also what's quite good is just to put the impressions for your own records, right? So let's copy this. So now we have a creative, we have the copy that was used, and we have the impressions. Because what I'm then gonna do in a layer process is I'm gonna take this and go, right, how can I how can I replicate this with my own brand? So maybe I switch out the products for my own products. Maybe I still shoot it on a table and I use two bottles. Then I'll have a testimonial here, but I'll use a testimonial from my own brand. You don't want to copy what other people are doing. You want to take the structure of the ad and replicate it for your own brand brand. And then same thing, you know, this is the structure of the copy. I'd maybe neaten this up, remove the HTML and just see what it looks like in all the sections with the spaces so that I can replicate it because it's a bit confusing like this. But how would I then insert my own stuff or would I look at this and go, well, here's a good messaging that works. They've started with a testimonial and then they've gone into their copy. Now that is something that works for the sleep niche. I've, I've seen success with that myself. So that's a good way we could start. We could start with a testimonial and then go into um, whatever they're talking about, science back, science balance sleep pills. So we're going straight into a USP, you know, analyze the copy, but I'm going to show you that in the next section and write our own copy from it. So let's go through this process. Uh, just grab one more. If you want, you can come and filter by the type. If you want to get videos, for example, so, you know, we can get a few images that way. Um, maybe you want to come in and just see the videos so we can get some variety. Well, here's like one nature made. Maybe we can come in and copy their stuff. So one other thing you can do as well, you can do this with images as well. 
you can come over and you can search by that advertiser specifically and just look at their ads. So again, we can filter by impressions. These are the ads that they've been spending a lot of money by. Now that we've filtered by advertiser, they might not just be related to sleep. It might be their other products. So you have to come in and find the ones that are relevant. Um, let's put it back onto videos. Okay, so this is just their videos. Wellness, morning routine. Okay, so nothing about sleep at the moment. Uh, bedtime routine. Okay, so here's one to do with sleep. <clears throat> so again, we could come in. Five tips for good sleep. So this is a very top of funnel creative. Maybe this isn't exactly what I like, but we could take it, repurpose it, or maybe use it something as top of funnel. So it's also giving you learnings, you know. It's showing that top of funnel, this is a good process that we should follow. So you can do the same thing, come in, download it, mark the impressions, copy the copy, and use it as inspiration. You can also filter by comments. That's another thing I like to do. Because if something's getting a lot of engagement, it shows me something, it's something that people are really um, interested in. But again, you have to take this with a bit of uh, logic, a pinch of salt. This one we obviously looked at previously. I said this is very top of funnel. This is something that I, I would imagine they're maybe running a traffic campaign behind. So it's getting a lot of comments, but that will be people sharing their experiences, um, adding their friend in the comments so they see it. It's not necessarily got lots of comments because it's generating lots of sales. You have to use a bit of mind, uh, your own logic and mind behind this. So that's not a good one to take, really. Um, this one is probably better. 100% drug fee, melatonin for restful sleep. You know, I can, it's got less comments, probably got, still got a lot of impressions. I could probably say this is an ad that is an ad that is for sales. And in fact, when I click on the learn more, button where does it take me okay it takes me to it takes me to their product page so yeah this is something that they are trying to generate sales from and we could take it as inspiration so that's another thing that these these um ads will show you is they will show you let me just do images because i can show you an example they will show you the exact landing pages people are using because that's another factor in Facebook ads, which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, but is a big factor, is how good your landing page is. So I saw one earlier that we should look at as good inspiration. Um, yeah, here it is here. So this one. Let, so that this is quite a nice ad as well. You know, this is something you could take inspiration from. It doesn't have as many inspiration uh, impressions, but you know, to start off, take the ones that have a lot of impressions. But as you go down the, the process, you know, you will have used those top impression ones, and you can start to use things that have a little less impressions, but maybe still have a decent amount. Have been running for um, a decent amount of time, so this one's not run that long, but you know, other ones might be, and use them for inspiration. So with this, though, I want to show you this as an example to show you that you can click on this. And you can see their actual landing page. So they have used a specific sales page for this product. You know, as soon as we arrive, we get a pop-up asking for our email address. So they're trying to get some benefit from that traffic immediately, even if they don't buy straight away. And then you come in and you can see how their sales page is laid out. You can also see the offer. So they're giving you a free, try for free offering, okay? And exactly how the sales page is laid out. So you get massive benefit by doing this competitor research process. We can then go to their website and actually look at the, you know, the actual product page. So they're not sending their traffic to the product page. They have bespoke landing pages. Maybe that's something we should do. That's something I do do for this brand because it works better than the product pages, right? So again, go through that process, get a mixture of videos and images and then you can move on to the next step. So what I want to show you first of all is, of course, doing this on Ad Library in case you don't have a tool. So it's the same, it's the same process. So you know, you'd come in, select the country. 
United States, uh, search a keyword, uh, come into all ads actually, search the keywords, so sleep supplement, and you can start having a look at what brands there are. The problem with this though is we don't have any data behind how long these have been running and if they're actually good for that reason. But also you'll get some random stuff, a lot more random stuff coming up that isn't actually related to sleep supplements. It's just from sleep brands. So the the the, the, the tech behind this isn't as good at like narrowing down stuff. But what you're going to do is you're going to find some inspiration of different competitors. You're then going to click on see ad details. So this looks quite well done. I imagine they'll have lots of ads uh, or maybe not. They've got zero followers. Who knows? We'll see. You're going to come to see ads and look at their full library. Okay, so you can see they've got a full library and you want to come down to the bottom and see the stuff that has been running the longest. So this brand has obviously just started running ads. 1st of April, this is the 2nd April today. So because they've just gone live with stuff, it's not very good insights for me because they've not proven these ads either. So we have to go and find another one. Really the best way to use Facebook Ads Library is just to look at your competitors. So let's go on InnoSups again because we know they're a good competitor. So we can search them, you know, we know they're a brand that already have success. Like I said, come down to the bottom and probably gonna have to go quite a while with them. So I'm not gonna go all the way down. Let's just come around to this zone. So stuff that's been running since November. So, you know, it's a competitor brand. We know they're a good company. If they've had stuff since running since November, it means that creative is probably working for them or they will have changed it. So you can see here, here's a creative that I might wanna take for inspiration. Um, you know, it looks nice. So let's copy that image, put it into our document and where did it go? Yeah, let's copy the copy as well. Okay. And then maybe we look at their landing page too. They're going to the product page. So you don't need to look at the landing page for every ad. It's just out of uh, curiosity when you're first getting started. But anyway, for this process, we're not looking at landing pages, we're focusing on the creative. So that's what you do. Obviously, you don't know the num number of impressions, but if you want, you could put like the date as to when that ran. I won't be doing it via this process. I'll have all the impressions because I'm using the spy tool. <clears throat> but if you weren't, that's what you would do with um, the ad library, okay? Now, the next thing I'll do Maybe not at the the start, but when I am running my ads further down the line, is I'll use a second tool to get more inspiration of creative design. So you can see here, this is a creative concept. The concept is photograph with testimonial. This one is product photo with you know graphic design, right? If I wanna come in and get more concepts, more ideas, more inspiration, I like to use another tool called Effortlessly where you have to be a bit more high level, but it's a really good tool for understanding what other creatives you can you can use really, okay? So big something like Big Spy is really gonna be your core, but if you're just trying to get creative inspiration and you're like stuck, you're not a creative person like me, this is the tool I use and it's really, really helpful. So what you wanna do is you wanna come into um, this tool, I'll show you it really quickly because uh, it's not really an essential thing at this, at this early stage, but I just wanna show you what kind of stuff, what kind of things that you would do with it. So let's say we wanna get more images. Uh, we're gonna select images, come down to my industry and supplements doesn't really have a defined one. So we're gonna go to personal care because they'll have similar stuff, you know, with bottles and things. And maybe I come into the, the style features and I wanna just get stuff that is a product photo, right? Because that's what we were looking at with that competitor. You know, they had this one here, they had the product and they had text. So let's, let's look at that as a concept. So product, product photos, is there any that have text? to give me inspiration. So here's a nice one, you know, they've got the product and they've got a hand. 
and then just some nice slogan. This one, they've got the product and they've got a list of benefits, right? Here's one, this is quite cool. They have the product and some things. So maybe I could recreate this. I could have my bottle in that slant of a shadow. I could have the pills instead of liquid, as mine's pills, and I could have some USPs with arrows and then a headline on the top, right? That's the kind of thing you can do. You can get more inspiration from other people's creatives using a tool like this. So again, I have a discount code for this one. I reached out to them and you can get 20% off if you use my code. But for this process, this isn't as essential. Um, you know, this is just creative inspiration. There's no data behind these. It's just helping you brainstorm, right? So that is really your competitor research. Get a number of these listed out and then you can come in and pick the ones that you want to use in the next section, which I'm going to show you, which is writing copy. Of course, for the creatives, you don't need to do anything else. You can just literally say uh, to a graphic designer, you know, recreate this. And then rather than having that headline, you're going to take the headlines that you're going to generate from the next stage, which is writing the copy. So let's move on to that section now. Right, it's time to look at writing our ad copy. And this is ad copy as well as messaging because the copy is really going to be the foundation for your creative as well. You know, copy isn't just the actual written text part. It is what is the messaging angles that you are trying to go after? What are the USPs and things that you're talking about? Do your copy first and then take that messaging and put it into the creative designs that we've now seen from competitors. Okay, so we're transferring that 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 messaging into our creatives but we want to have the copy written first so we know what we're going to be talking about, what points we're going to be hitting so that they are uh, relevant to each other. So there's two ways I'm going to show you how to write copy. I'm going to show you a quick way using ChatGPT and I'm going to show you how we would repurpose your competitor's copy as well. Now, of course, you can as well also just write copy from scratch manually which I will do as well. But I'm not gonna show you that today because it's, it's a whole video in itself. I do have other videos where I go into that into detail, show you the psychology behind it, what we're doing. And you know, if you've never written copy before, those might be something worth watching to get the understanding. So I'll leave a link in the description, but if you, want, if you just wanna get ads running right off the bat, you can use ChatGPT is probably your safest bet, right? So what we're gonna do is I've just created this prompt that I'm gonna copy. Um, and one thing actually, so, that what I'm doing here is, right, write me Facebook ad copy for a natural sleep supplement, okay? You would obviously insert your product there using the ADA format with the hook. So the ADA format is a copywriting structure, the most common one. So I'm telling it to use that, that format. And then I'm giving it the hook. Now, what you could do is you could take the hooks from your avatar research process that it already generates. So you just literally copy one of these hooks and put it in. But I already have the ads created that I've used for my brand in the past. So I just wanna make this more understandable for you. So I've put in a specific hook that I have on those ad creators, right? So I didn't have to go make fake creators for this tutorial. So we, um, yeah, we've put in the hook there and then I've told it to mention my product USPs. Okay, so what, what are the USPs for my specific product? Otherwise, it's just gonna write you copy that might not be relevant. And once you have that prompt, so I've said made in the UK, scientifically backed ingredients, all in one natural blend, right? So we're gonna copy that, uh, copy the whole thing. Okay, and then you would put that into ChatGPT, just as it is, and it has written me some copy, right? And it's told me what sections it's using from the ADA. So ADA is attention, interest, desire, and action. So let's copy this copy. And put it into our document. Okay, so remove attention. Obviously, that's not part of the copy. Uh, interest, desire, and action. I'm gonna read that, make sure I like it, make sure it makes sense, okay? So are you tired of tossing and turning at night, struggling to fall asleep and stay asleep? Maybe I can add some emojis as well to liven it up, you know, whatever. 
uh, we have a solution for you introducing our all natural sleep supplement designed to help you sleep faster longer and ultimately better okay so there is the hook there in the top paragraph that i'm going to be uh, mentioning so what i'd like to do is maybe mention the brand so we have a solution for you introducing rather than our all natural sleep supplement i'm going to say introducing bedtime blend which was the the brand name our all natural sleep supplement designed to help you sleep faster longer and ultimately better and maybe i add another emoji in there of the sleeping person uh, you know like it's up to you you don't need to have emojis you can add them like just break it up whatever okay so our product is safely made in the uk with scientifically backed ingredients unlike other sleep aids our all-in-one natural blend won't leave you feeling groggy or sluggish in the morning instead you'll wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day and then imagine being able to blah 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 so don't wait any longer to start getting the quality sleep you deserve try our all-natural sleep on the day and experience different yourself order now and take the first steps on a better night's sleep okay so they're they're fluffing this out a bit i'd maybe cut the end so don't wait any longer to start getting the quality sleep you deserve try our all natural sleep supplement today right i think we could just leave it at that and then maybe i put the landing page link in the bottom as well right so i know that i'm going to put the landing page in there okay so there's the first copy written by ada and the the hook or angle is going to be sleep faster longer and ultimately better so let's just specify that so we can use it in our creatives as well okay and then the next one we're going to do is we're going to repurpose um copy from our competitor so yeah i, I might do more to that i might switch it around a bit obviously i'm just running through this quickly i don't want to spend too much time on it but that's what you would do and if we come back up to our competitor research, so all I've done is I've removed the HTML from this and just made it look how it will actually look. And I'm going to copy that into this now. So it's two different variants of copy. One has been created by ChatGPT. One is from my competitor. So again, we want to try and focus on this hook. So I want to try and find a testimonial that mentions something about sleeping faster or sleeping longer or having better quality sleep. Now, obviously that is the product USP. Those are all three of the product USPs. So most, uh, most testimonials are probably gonna speak about that. I'm just gonna make one up. So I sleep better and fall asleep easier than ever since I started in blah, 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 with no morning problem. Okay, so um, let's just say I sleep better. Uh, I sleep deeper maybe. So like I sleep deeper and in fact, no, I sleep longer and fall asleep much easier. Um, now that I take bedtime blend and uh, what would we say like, I sleep longer and fall asleep easier. I sleep longer and fall asleep much easier now that I take bedtime blend. Plus my overall mood is so much, much better. Okay, terrible testimonial, but I just want to show you the process. I don't know what that emoji is they put in. And let's put Cameron. And maybe we could add like verified or I could add like a customer, Cameron customer, right? Maybe I do something like that. So you can change it a little bit. It doesn't matter too much, but the format is testimonial. Then the next section is this scientifically balanced sleep pill helps your body to do the healing while you sleep, right? So I want to get my hook in somewhere. So let's go for the scientifically backed sleep supplement. You know, you don't want to use it exactly. And you want to fit your own brad helps your body do the healing so let's say it helps you 
because that's not relevant for me, helps you sleep faster, longer, and ultimately better. Sleep faster, longer, and ultimately better, right? And then how we create the first smart sleep moment with 25 ingredients to support sleep. So again, that's not relevant for my brand, so it's how um, we create So we just want to apply a USB that fits us. So they're giving some value by saying they're the first smart sleep supplement. Um, I don't want to say that. Let's say we created the, we created an all natural. All natural yet effective sleep. supplement with um blend of like 12 we created an all-natural um yet effective sleep supplement with a blend of 12 clinically studied sleep promoting ingredients right so i've used the same concept but i've changed it to fit my brand and then they've listed out the ingredients so i'm not going to do this right now maybe we'll do the one lavender um oh no so yeah actually let's keep that concept so they've said they've said what each of their ingredients does so deep sleep soothe stress recovery sleep through the night right so i would just come in and put my ingredients here that do each of those things so ingredient one maybe recovery um i might remove recovery as i'm not focusing that so i want to focus on sleeping faster longer and better so let's say uh fall asleep okay and then we're going to add whatever ingredients allow you to fall asleep fast uh, deep sleep whatever ingredients allow you to sleep deeply um reduce stress maybe whatever ones allow you to reduce stress right so on and so forth and then sleep for the night is another one right so finally we get down to the last section it's the only sleep supplement made with the, with a whole systems approach so it's designed to promote, not override your body's natural sleep processes. So you can wake up feeling recharged and refreshed with the quail and night sleep. So they're just adding us a little bit more. We can maybe cut out this section, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's um it's made, it's safely made. It's made uh, in the UK. Yeah, let's say safely. It's safely made in the UK. Um, ensuring the highest quality standards. It's safely made in the UK um, to strict Safety and quality standards. So let's remove that. It's made in the UK. It's made in the UK to strict safety and quality standards, ensuring um I have to say that let's say to strict quality standards. It's made in the UK to strict quality standards, ensuring uh Ensuring your safety or something, right? So I maybe think about that to word it better, but that's what we're trying to do. I'm just trying to give another benefit of my product. So you can wake up feeling recharged and refreshed with it. So you can wake up feeling recharged and refreshed with bedtime blend. And then this was actually a New Year's offer. So we could say, take 50 friends off your product. I could say, try today. And maybe I go like 30 day 
money back guarantee. Try today. Um, get our 30 day money back guarantee. Right, and that's that second copy done. So again, same hook. I've used the competitors one as inspiration. The real core thing that I'm doing is I'm copying the structure. So the structure is testimonial. Um, you know, what does the product do? How does it do it? Explain the ingredients alongside the benefit of each ingredient. And then give one more USB, then a call to action with a, a unique selling thing that's going to increase the chances that they take action today, right? So that's the second copy. That's us now. We've got two two um, pieces of copy. And what I would do is I would take this now. So like sleep faster, longer, and it'll be better. I would take this and I would incorporate it into something like this. So like this creative here, you can see it's got thermogenic PM burn. Maybe my hook is sleep longer and faster. There in its place, right? Um, same with this, the testimonial there. I could take the testimonial that I've used in the creative sorry in the copy or i could even make another version where i have my headline down at the bottom you know just to try different things and i have examples for you so for example this one you can see we've got a creative sleep faster longer not to be better there's my hook another one just text heavy sleep faster longer not to be better made in the uk so like you can do different things with them and in your videos as well you can use these hooks so that's what we're gonna be doing in the next section. That's essentially how you would write copy just to get started. But like I said, I have videos that are just, they just talk about how to write copy for an hour. So those would be good to watch as well and they're linked in the description. Right, time for the actual strategy we're going to be using. So I quickly wanna just cover this so you actually understand what you should be doing on a high level strategy. And then of course, we'll jump into Ads Manager and build the campaigns so you can see exactly how you set them up. So the first thing I want you to keep, to keep in mind is this, you only wanna use Facebook ads to run traffic to your top performing products. So those are the products that generate 20% of your overall business revenue. Now, of course, if you're just starting and you have a new product or whatever, you're just gonna be running it to that product. You're not gonna have a whole bunch of products. But the reason why we want to do this is we want to increase our chances of getting a return on our investment of our ads. And the way you're gonna do that is most likely by selling the products that people have already shown that they want to buy. So if you're an established brand and you're just wanting to do Facebook ads for the first time or you wanna get better in your Facebook ad strategy, this is what you wanna do. You're gonna see a massive help in generate returns by doing this process. So advertise only the products that your top products, have them as the focus for your campaigns, the focus of your creatives, and then, and your landing pages. And then once people come onto your website or they become a customer, you can use your website, you can use your social media, and you can use your email to offer those people your other products as supplements. So it's either packaging them as bundles, upsells, just having suggestions on your websites, offering them promotions in the emails or the social media, all those kind of things, so that you're get, get almost like guaranteeing getting a better chance of return on ad spend, front end, and then you're improving the lifetime value of a customer with those other products, okay? And also one more thing you can do is you can run a specific campaign type where you are using your product catalog on Facebook to also use Facebook's data to show people those other products. But we'll, that won't be for everyone, so we'll talk about that in a second. So the structure of your campaigns is you're gonna have one campaign that's gonna be a sales campaign per product, per country, and we're gonna use Advantage Campaign Budget, which was also formerly known as CBO and what people refer to as a CBO campaign. They've just had a branding change where they call it Advantage Campaign Budget, right? Your budget that you're gonna use ideally should be seven times your CPA. So if you've never run ads before, you just have a goal CPA based on how much your product cost is, of course. You know, what would be your break-even point maybe? Uh, and use that as your CPA. 
but you can probably get away with a CPA of a budget of three to five times your CPA. So the reason that I'm saying seven times your CPA goal is Facebook wants you to get 50 conversions to exit the learning phase. Now you might do it sooner, you might do it later, but that is the goal recommendation they want. So for us to exit the learning phase in the period of say a week, which is a good a good sort of time period, we're gonna to need to be getting seven conversions every day. So seven times whatever our CPA is, is effectively what would allow us to get those seven, con con uh, seven conversions a day to get to our 50 conversions for the week. But of course that for some people might be a lot of budget. You might not have that budget, which is why I say you can probably still get away with three to five times your CA CPA, but it's just gonna take longer. If you can't afford even three times your CPA, you're really not having enough budget to use Facebook ads effectively. And what I recommend you do is start on Google ads, build up some revenue there, and then move on to advertising on Facebook or start organically and trying to get some revenue there, okay? Of course, if your situation is you wanna run Facebook ads and you can only do one or two times your CPA, that's just what you gotta work with, I guess, but yeah, you really wanna be having more. And you know, if it is only one or, if it's less than one times your CPA, just don't do it, there's no point. You're just wasting your money. Um, so yeah, this is really the guide that I say, three to five times your CPA. Uh, and, and the ultimate one is seven times, right? So your targeting will be broad and that means you're gonna, only gonna be specifying the living in location, the age and the gender. And we're also not gonna be using any audience exclusions. And also with the age and the gender, most of the time you're, you're probably gonna just leave them as default anyway as well. And then the one thing I was saying you could add, which is not gonna apply to most of you, so I'm not gonna cover it in the tutorial, but I just wanna make you clear, maybe I'll, at some point I'll do a specific video on this, just showing you how you set these up, is you wanna have, um, or you don't you don't want to, but you could have a sales campaign with all product catalog ads. So Facebook's gonna dynamically show people any one of your products from your full catalog of products you offer from your Shopify store if that person has showed shown engagement on those products or based on their data, it looks like it would be something they'd be interested in. So that's a good way to sell your other products out of that top 20% in a way that's gonna get you a good return. But yeah, it's not gonna to apply to most people. Only do this if you have a lot of different products. So multiple SKUs, um, otherwise it just doesn't make sense. You wanna run the campaigns per product, right? And then the method we're actually gonna to do to set up these, or to structure these campaigns and ad sets and ads is Charlie T's 322 method. So I've not come up with this method. It's by a guy called Charlie Trichner, I think. And he's a massive expert in Facebook ads. So I just wanna give him a shout out. But just bear in mind, this is not his methodology in its purest sense because obviously I input my own knowledge and things and strategies into it, but the actual strategy of the 322, so three creative, three copy, three headlines, and running this as one dynamic creative with two test ad sets, sorry, one campaign with two dynamic creative test ad sets, and one top post ID, this is his strategy, so he's come up with it, full credit to him, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one campaign and it's gonna be the Advantage campaign budget like we mentioned. And within that, you're gonna have ad set one and I recommend you do, so it's a dynamic creative ad set. I recommend you test images in one of these. Targeting will be broad. You're gonna have three images, two copy, two headlines and I like to add two CTAs as well to give you a bit of variety based on where people are at in the funnel. And then you're also gonna have one specific hook or messaging angle that you're focusing on with these creatives, with these copy, with these headlines, like we've shown you in the copywriting process. Your second ad set is gonna be, again, another dynamic creative testing one, but this time we're gonna use videos 
and the same setup, but obviously videos in place of images. So you don't need to always have one that is videos, one that is images. You could be running two tests and it's just images or two tests and it's just videos. The only thing you need to keep in mind is if you're doing a dynamic creative ad set, make sure the creatives are always the same format. So if you have videos, only have videos in that ad set. If you have images, only have images. Don't mix and match whatever format is in one ad set because they behave differently so you won't get accurate results, right? And the other thing is, it is good to have a mix of images and videos, but you don't need to be running images and videos testing every single week. You could just do this for the start and then once you start to find, okay, videos are working much better for me, fine, do more tests where you're just focusing on videos, having two running for videos, but now and again, make sure you try and cycle in some images because if someone buys only from images, they never ever watch videos on the platforms, you're never gonna be able to sell to that customer if you're only running videos. So you wanna have the balance, right? But you will often see that one particular format will perform better for your, your account. And then the third one is gonna be uh, an ad set where we have our post IDs. So this is gonna be a regular ad set. And this is effectively our winners ad set. So let us let me put that in winners. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking the winners of these dynamic creative tests and moving them into this winners ad set, which will also have the same broad targeting and it's probably gonna have up to five ads live at any time. So you might have more ads live if they're doing well, that is fine. But you might also have less ads live because you've only found so many winners. The, the thing is though, you, a good number is sorry, three to five. That's a, that's a good number of ads you're running at any time. That shows you have a good roster of ads that can be bringing you success. So that is the strategy and is there anything else I need to tell you on this? Um, yeah, maybe just one more thing. So what we're, the reason why we're using dynamic creatives to do the, the testing is these are the best ways of using the AI in Facebook and using the machine learning in Facebook to get the optimal creative copy, headline, call to action combinations that you could possibly run. So you're basically getting your learnings a lot quicker using AI and machine learning by using dynamic creative tests than you would by you know setting up a couple of manual ads inside a regular ad set and finding what ad performs the best in that way and then moving them into ad set three. So that'll make more sense once I actually set up the campaigns. But yeah, that's why I'm using dynamic creative as the test which some people might not use that you see on the internet, okay? So let's jump in now and actually get ahead with building the campaigns. So we are inside Ads Manager and you're gonna to come to Create to create your first campaign. Come down and select the Sales Objective and then hit Continue. Okay, so make sure it's always the Sales Objective. Don't use any of these other ones. We're trying to generate sales because uh, it's e-commerce. So we've done that. We're going to give this uh, a name. So I, I, I have our naming structure, but for this, you can just call it product. And uh, and maybe the country. Okay. So I will at some point definitely do a video on naming structure because they really help you organize your account. But for now, I just want to show you what these are. So it's going to be the campaign for one product, the campaign for a specific country. You may as well write what those two things are. Okay. And then we're going to come down to this one here. So this is the only thing going to change. It might be on by default. If it's not, click on this. So Advantage Campaign Budget. That is now a CBO campaign. You don't need to worry about anything else here. Just uh, one thing though, that sometimes this might be turned on, turn off this. So catalog, you don't want it to be a catalog campaign. So you might need to turn that off if that is turned on, right? Then you're gonna set your daily budget. So remember we said seven times our CPA. So let's say my CPA was $30. Well, I wanna do a daily budget of $210. 
of course if you can't afford that you have to do the budget that works for you and you can leave everything the same so campaign bid strategy is highest volume we can now move on to next and do our first ad set so this is test test ad set and this one's the images and let's put that it's a dynamic creative Okay, so this is a horrible naming structure. I just want to do this for you, like I said. So so this is going to be your first dynamic creative um, test ad set, and it's going to be images in this one. And you're going to come into this, come down, maximize number of conversions, conversion event. We want to make sure this is purchase, so I'm going to delete that and make it purchase. Don't use add to cart. Don't use landing page view. You know, people might tell you to warm up the pixel and optimize for add to cart or something nope always optimize for purchase i have a short explaining why but yeah just know that e-commerce even if you're just starting for the first time fresh pixel fresh account purchase is what you want it's a machine learning platform so train it to get the right conversion event right so purchase is what we want to do and that is that fine now the start date we want to run it the next day from when we're building it so let's do it at midnight but generally what i would do as well is run my ads from a monday run my tests from a monday so i would probably suggest that you do the same but of course if this is tuesday that you're building your ads you don't necessarily need to wait all the way to monday to get your first ads live you can do it going live on wednesday and then you know in following weeks you can start to move to a um you know starting your ads on monday there's no reason for it it's just a, it's like a cyclical thing every week so i like to start them on the same day every single week okay the reason that we do do it to the next day though at midnight is you don't want to start running stuff part way through the day because you're not going to get a full day's worth of data and also even if this is like 9 a.m in the morning facebook may take or meta may take uh quite a while to actually approve your ads to review them so you might only get the ads live until 11 p.m. at night. They run for an hour. You don't really get any insight from that and you've just wasted your money for an hour, right? So yeah, allow them to run for a full day by setting it at midnight for the next day. Don't set an end date. Even if you have a certain amount of time you want to run your ads, don't set an end, end date. Don't make it a lifetime budget campaign. Just turn them off at the date you need to turn them off or create a rule in Facebook to automatically turn them off, right? Um, don't need to do anything here. And you're gonna come down to the audience now. So nothing in custom audiences, the location, like I said, you wanna select the location that you're advertising in. So my default one is gonna be the United Kingdom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and change this to people living in this location so people living in or recently in this location is probably fine if you're a brand selling internationally you know a big brand but for most of you you want to focus on the particular market you're in and you want to be targeting the people who are actually living in there or you're just wasting your money because the person might be in there and then they might leave so move it to people living in this location and we said for this example we do the united states because that's where we did our creative research on in fact no we i mentioned my copy i was in the uk so let me just do it to the uk so it's just accurate okay so united kingdom you don't need to do any exclusions or anything because it's just including the country and you can see that has now got the united kingdom including uh, northern ireland as well um, so the age now, now you could set a certain age if you have a product that is for older people, maybe you want to target an older demographic. But even if you have a product for older people, if you set the age for 18 plus, it's not going to spend money on old people. You know, it's going to know how, to, who should I show this to, to get a purchase based on my data on the platform from other brands and my data from how these people generally behave. So you're fine just leaving these open, but like I said, if you already have other campaigns running, 
you've built up the learnings on a certain age bracket and you know that age works, you can filter to that age range. Or you can use your your avatar research to specifically advertise to the age range that was in your avatars. So where was my avatar example? So you know, like 20 to 50, 25 to 50 is my avatar. I could change that 25 to 50, but I like just leaving it open and allowing my messaging to guide it to the right people. And then the gender, same thing. If you have a female-centric product, you might want to change this to female only. We just come into edit and you know select female. Um, but again, men might be gifting the product to their girlfriends. They might be part of that consumer journey at the top funnel, top of funnel, getting the awareness. So maybe you do want to leave it as um, all. I tend to like using that as all. And I'll just switch it to one if I need to narrow the audience. So that is one thing. If you don't have much budget, maybe you want to l lower your audience size here by switching it to women. So like if I had a, a female product, I didn't have much budget, I would recommend, yes, do switch it to women only. And likewise, if you have a male-generated product, centric product, you don't have much budget, focus it on males and then you can lower your audience size. And the same thing with the age. So, you know, you can see here that's half my audience. If I don't have much budget, just get the audience smaller. So maybe I do 25 to 50. And that has really reduced the size of my estimated audience, which means I'm able to reach them better, right? So we're not going to do that for now. We're going to leave it 18 and up. And we'll leave it in all. And then you don't want to do anything in this detailed targeting section. So people that talk about adding interests, demographics or behaviors, you know, different groups. Don't do that. We're specifically going broad and we're focusing on our messaging and our creative to target the right people. This is why this strategy works so well. We're utilizing machine learning. I have videos talking about why we don't use this, but just don't do it, okay? And then the languages, you don't need to change the language unless you're running ads for a specific demographic um, or in a specific language in a country where that is not the native language. So for example, if I'm running ads in Spanish, targeting Spanish speaking people in the United States, maybe I would come and change this to Spanish. So I made sure that I am speaking to those really, really, really relevant people, okay? But, you know, I'm running it to the US, sorry, I'm running it to the UK, and the, the language of the UK is English, so I'm happy just to leave it as all languages because someone might be living in the UK. They might have their Facebook in a different language, but it doesn't mean I don't want to show them my products. They still speak English probably because they live in the UK. It's just they have another native language maybe. Um, so that's why I wouldn't specify English. I want to leave it as all languages, right? And that is that one set up. Uh, one more thing, actually. We need to make this a dynamic creative ad set so what you want to do is you want to select this thing here dynamic creative okay hit continue that is now a dynamic creative we can only have one ad right so let's come in and actually enter our stuff in our ads now so this is going to be your uh, let's put dynamic Images, all right, so I'm basically just putting in, I'm putting in my, that it's dynamic creative, that it's images that I'm focusing on and that this is the 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 hook we're targeting the messaging hook but of course you'd be you you want to make this make clear to yourself to yourself so like if it's a particular type of image maybe give it a category um if you have landing pages that are different you can specify the landing page you can have a, a a sheet where you keep all your copies you can say what specific copy it is you know give it a reference and then you can always get back to it so again i have a naming structure it's very in-depth it would take a whole video, so I don't want to cover it uh, in this, but I will do that at some point um, soon so that you can see 
how you should name things if you really want to get into doing this properly, okay? But for now, I just want to make it clear what we're doing with these. So come in, select the Instagram account and your Facebook page. If you haven't assigned your Instagram account to your account yet, you'll be prompted with the ability to do that. So you want to go and do that. You don't, however, need an Instagram account to run Facebook ads, but you do need a Facebook business page, okay? So if you, if you have an Instagram account, but you don't have a Facebook business page, you won't be able to run ads. You always have to have a Facebook business page and that will still allow you to run ads on Instagram. Just whenever anyone clicks on your profile, it will take them to Facebook rather than your Instagram page, of course, because you don't have one, right? So then come down to ad setup and we're going to leave on multi-advertiser ads. That's fine. You can uncheck it if you want. I have a video again that explains what they are. So you can go and find that. And then we're going to upload our creatives. So let's upload the images. That we have made. Okay, so three images per the structure and just select them. So you can see here, I've made three images. They all have the same hook, sleep faster, longer, and ultimately better. Uh, help to sleep faster, longer, and better. Sleep faster, longer, and ultimately better. So three different creatives, different styles, different things going on, taken from inspiration of other people, but they all have that same messaging hook. And then I like to turn this off, optimize creative for each person, because with the dynamic creative, if you have this checked on, it just gives you so many different uh, versions, so it's very hard to get the best ad. So uncheck that one, and then you're going to come and add your copy. So we're going to go back into our copy document, and we're going to copy the first one we did. Okay, uh, let's put that in. And add text option to add the second one. Add that in. Okay, and just read over it, make sure it looks okay. You can see here I made a mistake, ensuring your safety. Um, but I'm just rushing through this process, of course. So then we wanna come down and put the website in. So let's put Swinio. Okay, so because I've put in the website, it's now been able to generate a preview and I'm gonna copy this too and put it in my ad there. So where I said link, I may uh, let's do this properly actually. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we've got two pieces of copy now and fix that up. So now we can move on to our headlines. So one headline, I'm just going to literally use that sleep faster, longer, and it'll be better from the copy. Okay. And Another one I'm going to say, okay, so your headlines are really just going to be things that are impactful, that people care about, right? And then you don't need to add a, a description. So we've got three images, two um, pieces of copy, two headlines, our website, and then we're gonna add a second call to action. So I'm, I always like to do learn more and shop now. And you can also try order now. And then you also wanna add your domain, okay? And you wanna add some UTM URL parameters if you had. So we can come in and just do
yeah, just get them from Facebook if you want. So let's just copy that. Dynamic parameter values. Yeah, let's use this one. Okay, so just copy that. Put it in. So that's going to dynamically What's this? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, never mind. Um so yeah, so that's the ad, that's their first ad created. Okay. Now we could hit publish. I don't want to hit publish because uh, I don't want this to go live in my account. But what you do now is you would hit publish and then come back. And as you're still building, just turn off your campaign for now by clicking this. So you've got the campaign tab. That's what you do. So now we're going to come and click back into the ad set tab. And we're going to do duplicate on this so you want to do control d okay to duplicate it so let me just uh, delete that and i'll show you the other way so if you don't do control d the shortcut you can come down to this and just do duplicate and keep everything the same yep keep it the same and just do duplicate right so that's another way you can duplicate the ad set now come in and this one is going to be the videos But because we have already done it, everything's already selected and set up the way we want, right? So all we have to do is maybe check it for good measure. But we just come down and, you know, check out's all fine. Come into the ad now that's below it. And we want to remove the images. Okay, so you can see the copy is already there. Everything's set up. All we're going to do is change these two videos. So let's select the videos now. And I've got three videos already for this. Okay, so there's my three videos. Just allow them to upload. Okay. So our videos are now in the account. You can see them nicely there. I don't need to do anything else with this apart from change the name up here to videos. Okay, and again, everything's the same. Now you'd hit publish on that. So let's come out of that one. We've got two dynamic creative ad sets set up. Now we need to create our winners one. So Let's duplicate it again to keep the targeting. Oh, sorry, I need to, I'm need i in the ad level. You need to come back to the ad set level and hit duplicate. So I'll show you the manual way. Okay, duplicate that. But with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to... Winners... And this is going to be a mix of images and videos. So let's just put mix. Okay, and you're going to come down and deselect the dynamic creative option now. Okay. Yep. I want that to delete. I don't mind. And also come in and delete this ad. Okay, so just click on it and then come down to delete because that no longer works, right? So that is you that's you set up all three of them you can now come back in flick this on and hit publish again okay well you won't need to hit if you've already published it you won't need to hit publish you just flick that on and it will become live and tomorrow at midnight that is going to go live so obviously there's nothing inside this one at the moment uh this is okay so these two this is the way this is going to filter out it's going to show you the ads from these two but if I publish this, there shouldn't be anything in here, right? So I can turn that off for now. There's no point having it on. It's not doing anything. It won't spend any money because there's no ads. But let's just have it off for now until we start to find winners. 
and I would leave this for you know a week, two weeks, start to build up some data, and whenever things emerged as the top ads, I would then take them and move them into this ad set here, okay? So in the next stage, when I show you the how you do the optimizations, I'm gonna show you the exact process of how you do this and, and what you're looking for. But that's essentially how you build your, your very first campaign, okay? And it's as simple as that. I mean, that took me no time at all. It isn't a difficult thing to do. You, the, real, um, the real work with Facebook ads is building the correct creative, so all that process before, and then a little bit of work in the optimizations, but really like, that's why I said the first steps are so important. Creative, copy, landing pages too, that is the real core things that allow you to have success, okay? Hope you're enjoying the tutorial so far, guys. I just wanted to jump in and quickly let you know that if you wanna learn more about any of this or you want some help actually setting up these or devising a strategy for your own brand, I do actually offer one-on-one -on -one consultation calls where I can give you tailored advice for your specific brand. So if that's something that's of interest, we can literally do this process together. All you have to do is go into the description. There's a link to my Calendly and you can go and book a one-on-one -on -one session there. But anyway, back to the tutorial. So we're gonna look at how you optimize your account now in Ads Manager. And you're gonna to wanna to do this process two times per week. I like to do it on a Monday and a Thursday as that's a nice split between the week. It gives a couple of days between each optimization for things to take effect. So yeah, less is more. Don't do it every single day because then you're not giving yourself enough time for any changes to take effect. And having a simple account structure like this gives you the beauty where you don't need to be in the account every day because you just have one campaign running. So you make your optimizations on those days and then you just wait and see what happens, okay? So everything runs very cyclically. So we're gonna come into, the, well, first of all, we're gonna look at the campaign overall. How is the cost per purchase? How is the ROAS? Um, how is your business also doing that in that week? You know, look back at your overall marketing efficiency ratio, which is basically the ROAS for your whole business. So all the, the channels added up, all the ad spend and the revenue for the business. It, are you getting a good return on your advertising spend? If you are, you can probably scale this up. If you're not, you can probably, you probably want to pull it back at 15%. So let's say the campaign's doing well. We are doing well as a business. I'm going to come in and I'm going to scale this 15 or 20%. So you could come in and do it manually here doing the calculation, but the best thing is to come into this drop down beside edit, click on campaign budget. So if we're doing well as a business that week, let's come into increase daily budget and put 15% or 20%. And then you can hit publish. And if we weren't hitting the kind of metrics we need to hit, we're not doing well, and there's no optimizations we could do in the account to try and improve that, you're gonna come in to campaign budget and you wanna pull back your daily spend, 15 or 20% as well, okay? And then obviously hit publish. That said, of course, if you're already at your baseline spend, you're already at that kind of minimum three to five X CPA, don't pull back spend. That is just the baseline you have to run with. You have to just introduce more creatives and try and find things that work really. So that's how you would kind of optimize the high level, scaling, pulling back, um, you know, looking at these metrics. There's nothing to benchmark these metrics off of. It just has to be based on previous performance. And like I said, is your individual base in your individual business making money for the setup you have, for your cost of goods, for your 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 overheads? No one can tell you that process. You just have to know these numbers for your business. Or if you're working with a business, they have to obviously give you back that information and you work in collaboration. So that said. What we can still do within that process is we can always optimize our our ad sets and our ads based on our continual testing process. So you're gonna come, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come inside the actual campaign 
and you're gonna come and filter it by amount spent. So you just wanna click on amount spent, you get the arrow pointing down, and it should normally nicely filter these all, but for some reason, I don't know why, today it's, it's not been nice to me because I'm doing this tutorial, and it's adding in campaigns that don't actually have spend in the week. So I'm just gonna click on purchase conversion value to filter it, and you can see that's made it nicely. But if you click on amount spent, it should normally just have only the ones that have spent in the order of spent. So this is a very clean example. This, this campaign has been running for almost two months now. And obviously I've been going through the process of finding ads that work during my testing and then moving them into this winner's ad set. So you can see this winner's ad set has emerged as the top spending ad set it has the highest ROAS and it has the lowest CPA. So it is really working perfectly for this process. You might, however, starting out, have the situation where your winner's ad set, because it doesn't yet have a roster of good ads with lots of machine learning data behind them in the ad set, it might not be your top spender. You might have one of your tests sitting up there, eating all the budget. But just know over time, it might take weeks, it might take months. As you populate that with top ads, it will gradually emerge as your top performing um, ad set. It just, it just takes time. Sometimes whatever's happening in the dynamic creative, the ability to show people different dynamic creative ads might just be doing so well for a period that it's getting all the spend. As long as it's getting spend uh, at good performance, who really cares? Just leave it running and eventually your, your winner's one is going to emerge at the top. So I've already made the optimizations for this this week, but I'll talk you through what I've done. So the winner's one is obviously sitting up there nicely. So the, f the, the first thing you might want to do is come inside that and start optimizing the ads. But I mean, that's something you have to look at holistically really. So this is doing, this is performing well. I'm happy with the performance, but I could come in and I could filter again the ads by amount spent and start to look at ones that are, you know, hitting different metrics. As long as the overall ad set is getting the performance I need, don't worry too much about, you know, being super, uh, like, super analytical on this and turning things off as soon as they go over a certain threshold. That's kind of like old school media buying things that people tell you to do. It's like as soon as it's over, turn it off. Sales go up and down. They vary based on weeks, okay? So something might just drop a little bit for a couple of days or for a week. Doesn't mean it's ad. You wanna give it a lot longer, give it a, a, a much, more, uh, much more of an opportunity to show it's not working anymore before you turn it off. So as long as my overall is meeting what I need to get, I don't really need to turn off any of these ads. You can see this one, like it's $30 CPA, but you know, the ROAS is good. Even though this one is $16, I can't just come and turn all these off and run with this one ad at $16 because it's not getting the spend. So it doesn't mean it's scalable. So even though it's got the best CPA, don't come and turn everything off thinking that somehow you're going to that all that spend's going to get transferred to this cheaper one and you're you're going to now be on a $16 CPA if it was something that was scalable all the spend would already be going towards it okay so you have to get really get a feel for this this particular process if something was maybe double my CPA and it wasn't coming back down then sure, maybe I'd turn it off three times my CPA, but you have to get a bit of a flavor of how these things perform. And eventually ads will die out in your winners, so you will have to turn them off, but just to make sure you give it enough time and you have a bit of thought behind it. So that's something that's very hard to teach you in one tutorial, that just comes with experience. But the general process is, if something's way out, turn it off. Um, but as long as your overall ad set's performing for the right level, you don't need to worry too much about changing the things from within it because Facebook will do that optimization for you. 
What you will do though, is you will need to optimize the ad sets. So let's filter this again. So you can see this test that was running this week. It's taken a, a decent amount of spend. So Facebook's liked it for some reason. It's decided to give it a decent amount of spend. But the results don't work for me as the media buyer don't work for the business. $64 CPA, 2.67 ROAS. Compared to what the top one is, our high spending campaign is not very good. So I want to get that turned off because it's just not working. If, if something's got scale and it's doing better than it, this is just not a good one. So I've turned that one off. Okay, that's a failed test. We'll obviously still go and analyze those creatives and try and understand why. Is there anything that was good about it? What learnings can we take? But in my optimization, I want that turned off. This next one, it's not been given very much spend by Facebook. So um, I've left it running just from experience again. Even though this is a higher CPA than my winners, I want to give this a little bit more time because it is still quite close to it. It's only had six purchases, so it's not a huge amount of data to say, oh, that doesn't work. I mean, six purchases is nothing. And it's not really hurting the overall campaign too much because it's not got very much spend. So I'm just going to leave that running. I want to review it on Monday. If it's come down, maybe I will move it into the winner's ad set. If it's, um, if it's still sitting around the, the same point, maybe I'll turn it off, okay? I will make that decision on Monday. And then this final one, I have turned it off again. So it's not getting much spend at all. And also the results are bad. So this is a clear example of something that just, yeah, turn it off. It's not liked at all by the platform. It's not resonating with people we have turned it off. So now that I've turned these off, I don't like to immediately set up new tests. I will set them up, but I will schedule them to start on Monday. So I always like to run my tests starting on Monday because if I've made my optimizations, so let's say this is the final optimizations, I've made them on Thursday. I want to give the account the benefit of running for a couple of days, fully optimized, no tests running, or if tests are running, it's because they're performing well, so that the account seven day look back, the overall week gets the benefit of running for a couple of days where we're not just constantly testing stuff, pulling down from that overall. It, it gets to feed into the overall as, all right, this is as optimized as it can be. Let's help the overall week win the week from doing that. And then we start the new tests the next week and give them the same sort of time window to be a fair test. So you can see here, I've scheduled two new tests. So that's another point. You don't always need to have strictly three ad sets running, two tests, one winners. In a situation like this where there's low spend going to this one, I could always start, uh, so let's say this one does end up coming down and it's just low spend. I'm not going to turn it off because it is performing, but I don't want to have it as like a placeholder blocking me from running another test because it's obviously not something that's going to be scalable. I still want to be able to test more and I have plenty of budget for in this account to do that. So I might, um, so what I have done is I've started two tests and I might have four ad sets running rather than just three. So you don't need to be super rigid with it. That said, if you have a lower budget, you probably don't want to be running four or five ad sets because you'll spread your budget to thinly amongst the ad sets and you'll hurt your overall campaign performance, but you also won't be giving enough spend to the actual tests and you won't be getting good enough feedback from them. So if you've got the very, very bare minimum budget, maybe you only test one ad set at a time. You have one winner, win winners and one ad set, or you have the one winners and two ad sets and you stick to that rigidly. You don't go above three uh, because you spread your budget too thinly. But if you've got plenty of budget, you don't need to worry about it too much, but definitely don't go above five uh, and just have too many things going on. You need to be more, okay, decisive in what is actually working in the account. So yeah, so that said, that's us kind of look through the optimizations, turn things off that weren't working, but what do you do if something 
was working and you want to move it as a successful ad into your winner's ad set. Well, we're going to jump on to another account so I can show you that in detail. And what I have for you here is I have one ad set that is images and one ad set that is videos because the way you retrieve the post ID to move the top ad naturally with Facebook isn't the same with videos and images. So they don't make it easy for us. I don't know why, but they are different. And one thing I will also point out is I have made a video on how to do this process multiple times, how to re retrieve the post ID for Dynamic Creative Ads and Meta keep changing the way you do it. So if this doesn't currently work for you, go look at my channel, see if you can see a recent video or search, do the search function and search for Dynamic Creatives and see if you can find uh, the most recent video on how you actually re retrieve the post ID because they might have changed it, okay? And if, if you can't find it, just leave a comment and I'll I'll direct you, or if you're doing something wrong, I'll let you know what you might be doing wrong. But anyway, the, the process of actually looking at what the winner is, is the same for both of them. So we can show you that now. So we're gonna come into your, your one, let's say for, for this example, this was getting us the CPA ROAS that we liked. What I'm gonna first of all do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna filter this here. So click on breakdown, come down to dynamic creative element. You might need to click on the actual ad. Uh, so sometimes it's gonna be like this, right? And if you if you click on the ad, it still doesn't work. Refresh the screen. Meta, is, uh, Facebook ads are just buggy sometimes. So let's see if that's worked. Yep, so now I can select it. So I'm gonna do, filter by image, video, and slideshow. And that's gonna filter out my images. So again, come in, filter by uh, amount spend, highest first. This one happens to only have two images. You, of course, will have three generally. And you always wanna be looking at the top spend. So don't worry too much about the CPA unless they have very similar spend and then CPA and ROAS is also like both good. Maybe there's like two types that you want, you're gonna be taking and moving into your winners. But generally, it's just gonna be one that emerges as the top performer. So you wanna make a note of that one. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna click on this ad, make a note of it. Okay, this is my this is my winner one. It's the square one. This other one's portrait, okay? So that was the difference. So making a note that the square one was the winner in this particular test. I then want to come in and break it down by the text. So this is my copy, okay, make a note, spend. So you can see here, this is very similar. So I'm gonna make a note that this is the top spending one, but because they are so close, the situation might arise that actually the top ad uses this secondary copy. But that's only because they're so close. If there's top spending one is a big significant, if the top spending one has a big significant difference in spend, it's most likely going to be the top performing copy, okay? So I'm going to note down this one for now, but I'm also going to have a mental note that that second one might be the top one, and I'll, I'll show you what you do with that in a second. You're then going to come in and break down the headline. So again, clear winner here, this one, better than melatonin, right? Take a note of that. And finally, come in and break down the call to action. And you can see, again, shop now is the clear winner. So I've got all those noted down. Uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to hit on preview. Make sure you add selected, of course. Come up to share. Facebook post with comments. And this is now going to show me all my dynamic ad variations that have been created and served that have engagement, okay? So if they don't have a like or a comment on them, they're not going to appear here, but they might still be running to the platform. So very rarely what can happen, and normally when you've not spent much money behind the, the Dynamic Creative, is you'll have a top ad that you see in here, but you won't see it in here. If that, if that is the case, just leave the dynamic creative ad running longer, okay? And come back to it later to come and retrieve the winner because it's not really put enough data for itself yet. So you don't, 
I think it's too early to come and remove the winner and put it into the winning ad set. Just leave it running longer, let it get more data, more spend, more people will start to engage with it because it's the thing that's going to be served the most. And then you can come in and achieve it, okay? But if you if you have done that process, so we said the square was our, our best image, the headline better than melatonin, the call to action shop now, okay? And then they really helped me fall asleep. That was That was the top copy that I showed you. So let me just show you that again. Oh no, it wasn't, it was the second one. So yeah, that's the perfect situation. That's the second copy is actually being the top performer for this particular one. So I need to then make a bit of a judgment call. So like, okay, I think this is the top ad because it has the most engagement, most comments, shares. That means it's probably had the most amount of spend. But let me just check the other ones just to double check. So you can see here, look, top square ad. This is not the top headline. This is not the top call to action. So even though this one is using the top copy and doesn't have much engagement, I can pretty confidently say for this one, okay, most of the spend is probably going to this one. That's why it's able to get the most engagement. It's using one, two, three, three out of the four elements that I'm noting as the top performers this is probably the top performing creative that is getting served the most that is bringing the results because with dynamic creatives what you're really doing is you're looking at the average i don't care about what's happening so much between each individual creative as long as the overall ad set of the dynamic creative test is getting the metrics i want success deemed as a winner successful I can safely say, well, that is the average of all the ads that are being tested in the dynamic creative ad. Thereby, if something has had the most spend, it has had the biggest impact on the average. So its results might actually be better than the average. And that's why we're taking it and moving it into the winner's ad set so it can just act on its own. But I don't care about what the individual elements are doing so much on their own. This process is just to help me understand what one is actually the best one so I can take it and move it, okay? So we know that this one's the best one. It's had the most engagement. That's generally going to be your best sign, but definitely go through the process of breaking them down just to tick off the right things and make sure that you are looking at the right one. And like I said, if you're not sure, just leave the dynamic creative running longer. Eventually in time, the top one will emerge and it'll be quite obvious what is the top one because it'll be getting all the engagement suggesting that it's been served more often than the other ones and adding to that average result. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in. This is the one I want. I'm going to click on the date of it. So this is the this is the process now of how to retrieve the post ID. And this is the step that's going to differ for videos. So everything before is relevant to videos. This is going to differ. So click on it once. I like to click on it again because it makes this top bar neater. And what you're going to do, now that you've clicked on it twice, you can click on it a third time just to make sure. If I scroll now, you can see this is only one ad. Uh, and I can see all the comments for this ad. It's removed it from the dynamic creative ad selection. And it's given me at the top this long string, which starts at PF bid and then ends before the and ID sign, okay? So this is what you want to take and copy for images. PF bid all the way along up until the and sign. So don't take the and sign, just take that. Click control C and then you can come into your winners. So I've got to open in another tab. So it's good to have two tabs for this process, it's easier. So I'm going to come into my winners. I'm going to either duplicate one of these so I keep all my UTMs and I keep my naming structure. But for this example, I'll create a new one so you can see it um, done nicely. So I'm going to create a new ad in my winner's ad set. I'm going to select my Instagram account, my page. In ad setup, I'm going to come to use existing post. 
if you were doing, if you had multi advertiser ads selected when you were doing your dynamic creative ad test, keep it selected. If you didn't, uncheck it. So make sure the ad is the same. So I did have it selected, so we're going to keep it checked. Come down to enter post ID here. So not select post, enter post ID and paste that long strain. Okay, hit submit. And you can see there, there's my ad appeared. It's got the the same copy, it's got all the engagement kept, and it's got the same elements. That's the same ad, it's the same post ID. So this has all the learnings behind it, and now it's in our winner's ad set. So we've kept all the learnings from it, we've kept all the data behind it, we've just moved it into a different ad set. Come in, select your domain, enter your UTMs, uh, obviously update the name to whatever you wanna call it, and also, what's good to do, good housekeeping, come and copy this number here. So that's now converted the post ID to the, prop, to the proper numerical format. And you can put that in there as well and add the name too. So that if you ever need to move these anywhere, you can just come and copy that easily and you know paste it into a new ad. You don't need to go through that process of clicking on this, okay? So that's how you would do a an image ad, let's now look at how you do a video. So with the video, you have to do a bit more of a long-winded process. So you're gonna clear that breakdown. Uh, this is the video one. So again, come through that same process, doing the breakdowns of image, video, slideshow, text, headline, and call to action. I'm gonna skip it just to show you how you retrieve the post ID for speed. So same thing, share Facebook post with comments. Uh, pick the one that's the best one by clicking on the date. Um, pause that. Now with videos, you can see this is different. It's opened it in the video player. What you wanna do for videos is you wanna come up and take this numerical value that is after videos dash. So not this one here, this one after videos dash. Copy that. And let me just show you this quickly. If I try and enter the post ID here with that, it's not gonna work. So it doesn't work because this is not the post ID, this is the ad ID. For some reason, they give you the ad ID rather than the post ID or the video ID, I don't know. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're going to come back to your account and you're gonna to come to the three lines on the left-hand side, all tools. Come down to page posts under engage customers, okay? You'll probably have to enter your authentication code. I'm gonna pick the right business from the top. So come down to add posts specifically, and it's of course gonna take me away. So come down, select your, your correct business manager, your correct ad account, okay? And we're gonna paste that numerical value now into here and what you'll see is, voila, it filters out the correct one. We can now click on that, scroll across and copy this. So this is the post ID now, copy that, come back into the ad, so delete that one, paste what we've just put into the page posts, hit submit, Hang on. There we go, I don't know what happened there. Uh, hit submit and let you go. There's the, the engagement, there's the ad, copy, headline, everything the same. So that's how you retrieve the images and that's how you retrieve the videos. Same process, come and copy this post ID that's now there, actually it'll be the same this one will be the same post ID you've just copied. So you could just copy that uh, and put it there straight away. But again, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. Just uh, copy it. So 199.829, 199.829, you can see it's the same. Okay, so that's how you would optimize your account. And actually you're ready to run Facebook ads. There's just one last thing that I really recommend you do in order to get success. And that is to go and watch my other videos on creative 
and copy because this is going to be the hardest thing to do when you first get started but also one of the most impactful things for getting success on the platform so definitely go watch some of my other videos on that and all i ask from you guys is if you could help me by hitting that subscribe button or sharing these videos with a friend it really helps me get my subscriber count up which helps me to approach sponsors to be able to fund some of these videos the editing which gives me more time to make good quality content for yourself so that, that said until the next time hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in another video very very soon